Uh, let's see. So yesterday we just got into the caves, right? We just passed this little waterfall thing and we're inside a cave. Um, or we had done some cave exploration, right? With the falling sand and everything. Okay. Um, so day 15 of 2022. Let's see what that has in store for us. Beacon exclusion zone. All right. You feel the ground rumble again as the distress signal leads you to a large network of subterranean tunnels. You don't have time to search them all, but you don't need to. Your pack contains a set of deployable sensors that you imagine were originally built to locate lost elves. The sensors aren't very powerful, but that's okay. Your handheld device indicates that you're close enough to the source of the distress signal to use them. You pull the emergency sensor system out of your pack, hit the big button on top, and the sensors zoom off down the tunnels. Once the sensor finds a spot, it thinks it will give We'll give it a good reading. It attaches itself to a hard surface and begins monitoring for the nearest signal source beacon. Okay. Sensors and beacons always exist at integer coordinates. Each sensor knows its own position and can determine the position of a beacon precisely. However, sensors can only lock onto the one beacon closest to the sensors measured by the Manhattan distance. All right. There's never a tie when two beacons are the same distance to a sensor. Okay. Um, it doesn't take long for the sensors to report back their positions and closest beacons, your puzzle input, for example, this, let's grab this as our test input. Because this, this looks like one of those problems where I want to run the test, test code more than once, <laughs> um, on test data before we go to real data. So consider the sensor at 218, right here, whoops. It found something at negative 215. Okay, so we already know there's going to be negative coordinates, so I'll use I-64s. Um, closest beacon is negative 215. For sensor at 916, the closest beacon is at 1016, just one away. Drawing sensors at as S and beacons as B, the above arrangement of sensors and beacons looks like this. Okay, I think I understand. This isn't necessarily a comprehensive map of all beacons in the area because each sensor only identifies its closest beacon. If a sensor detects a beacon, you know there are no other beacons that close or closer to that sensor. There could still be beacons that just happen to not be in the closest beacon to any sensor. Consider the sensor at 87, right there. The sensor's closest beacon is at 210, over here. So you know there are no beacons that close or closer in any positions marked hash. None of the detected beacons seem to be producing the distress signal, so you'll need to work out where the distress beacon is by working out where it isn't. Oh, okay. So basically just come up with a whole map of what, what sensor coverage there is and then look for gaps. For now, keep things simple by counting the positions where a beacon cannot possibly be along a single row. Um, so suppose you have an arrangement of beacons and sensors like in the example above and just in the row where y equals 10 you'd like to count the number of positions a beacon cannot possibly exist. The coverage from all sensors near that row looks like this. All right. In this example row where y equals 10 there are 26 positions where a beacon cannot be present. Consult a report for the sensors you just deployed. Is there a row where um, that looks like 2 million? In the row where 2 million, how many positions cannot contain a beacon? All right, let's get take a look at the beacon uh, beacon input, the puzzle input. Get input. Okay, so there's only 24 lines. So this is most of the data here, because I, I show the first 20 lines of text in my dump when I grab it. There's only 24 lines total, so that's... Not too bad, but the ranges are big. So I think that's what's going to kill us. We have to come up with some more efficient way of um, storing this information. Um, for now, it looks like we're just looking in a row. Well, for this one, it's y equals 10, but here's y equals 2 million of what the coverage is. So we can look just that one row. Right. And try to calculate it. And then part two... I think they gave away part two already. It's going to be where, find out where the beacon is going to be. There's probably the coverage, right, map of everything. And there's going to be one little gap where, where something, 
where the sensor can't detect a beacon and we say, oh, that's where it is, right? I think, I think they gave that away. Um, oh, here it is. Yeah, you'll need to work out where the distress beacon is by working where, where it isn't. For now, i.e. part one, just give me this one row's worth of data. Okay. I think I can work with that. <clears throat> Russ Jr., thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. And take a sip of water because <clears throat> my voice is going. Let's let's start by creating our module. My hands keep coming off the home row when I'm doing this. And then we start a new line here. Not day fifteen. Create the file. 22.15. Let's run bacon. There we go. Unsolved, unsolved. Um, parsing. So actually what we can do is just create a sensor object, right? Or sensor struct. Let's do that. Struct sensor. And it's going to have the location. Um, I said I was going to use I-64s because we have negative numbers. And then the beacon. And now we just want to be able to parse out this info. Oops. So we can say impulse and soar, fn parse, uh, string, and return to self. So this is a little complicated and possibly annoying. Um, we can split it this and then get the sensor at on one side and x equals y equals on the other side. Um, and then we want to split. Oh, you know what we can do is we can actually split all the way to the x equals. Why don't we do that? Because then I can split all the way to this. And then each side is just a number comma y equals a number. And then I can split on that comma y equals. That might be the easiest way to do it. Let left, right equals uh, s dot split once on this unwrap and now oops uh, left and right are going to have so left is going to be this and then right is going to be this and so right is actually the beacon and then so then let garbage and sensor equals left dot split once and then just this, right? Unwrap. So if I do this right, we should be able to just see those. Um, F, let lines equals AOC lib, read lines, input 2022.15.text. Oh, we're going to use the test input first. Uh, test input.text because this is a little on the complicated side. So get rid of that line for line in lines. Um, what we'll do is just parse this out, right? And we'll say, uh, for now, I'll just say sensor parse line. And I just print it out here. Um, print lin. That way we can see it. Sensor has beacon, beacon. I don't need to debug that out. Okay, and then we should see those uh, if we did it right. Oh, it has to return self. Okay, self. Um, you know what we could do is derive default and just do a default right now and then we're going to have it is uh, sensors it's just a vec of sensor here there we go what have we got did it work yeah so now we just need to split on this string right 
and then it'll give us our x and y coordinates. Okay, so we can say uh, we can create another helper function here called uh, chord and it returns an i64064. Um, let xy equals s dot split once on that string. Unwrap. And then we just return x parse, unwrap, and y parse, unwrap. And that should give us the location of the beacon and the location of the sensor, right? So we return a self of block of um, chord sensor self and beacon self chord beacon. And we should be able to just print these out up here now. Print line uh, debug out sensor. Get rid of that line. Uh, doesn't like that because sensor can't be formatted using that. Uh, debug. There. And what do we got? All right. So this looks like it's working, right? Let's let's compare it to the uh, in the test data. Two eighteen at negative two fifteen, all the way down to twenty one and fifteen three. Oh yeah. Th so these three found the same beacon. Okay. Very nice. Okay, so now we have the sensors. Um, that's the parsing done. Uh, now we have to do part one. Part one is look at line 10. Yeah, y, y equals 10. And we have to change it to 2 million for the real input. Hmm. How are we going to... I guess we can't automatically do that. I'll just have to... Let's call it the part one row. Um, I-64. And then we can just show that in here and then I'll have to remember to update it when we change the test input. Self self dot part one row equals 10. And then when I switch this to real input, I have to remember that this is actually uh, 2 million. Okay. Uh, so in part one, so in order to determine what sensors cover row 10, we need to know what the radius of coverage is, right? And so we can see the radius of this coverage goes all the way from 7 to negative 2, right? And all the way from 7 to 15, no, 16. So in 10, if we draw a line straight down, right, we'll hit this particular tile. And if the radius of this thing is whatever this distance is. 7 to 16 is 10, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so if we go up 3, or th if we go 3 to the line we care about, then we can go 6 over one way and 6 over the other way, and that's the coverage that this sensor has on line 10. So it's basically the radius minus the distance to the to the line we care about left and right does that make sense I, it makes sense to me but i'm probably not explaining it right um let's create a little function here called radius which takes in itself and returns a radius of um, the sensor so the sensor's radius is basically the manhattan distance to the beacon so it's uh, beacon dot zero self beacon zero minus self location zero abs plus self beacon one minus self location one dot abs right and that gives us a radius for each one so we can say for s in self sensor uh, well, what do we care about how many positions cannot contain a beacon? Oh, right, so we're just gonna see what's the coverage minus however many beacons there are already on that line, right? 
um, we can do this with a hash set since it's just a single line. Let's let's add the hash set in here. Let uh, coverage equals hash set new. Um, and in here, what we'll do is let radius is equal to s radius. And then uh, let's just print that out for now. Sensor at um, this location has radius, radius. So we'll, ju we'll just do this one step at a time so we can see what, what I'm doing here. Or I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Not we, me. I care about me. Um, there we go. It's going to give me a, a error, but I can do a code action of adding that import. I wish there were a way to just say add missing imports. Self-sensor. Oh, sensors. You have to say it the Star Trek way, sensors. Um, all right, we're not using this yet. Um, so let's just comment that out so we can at least see the output. That's this this stuff here. How come part one didn't get called? I mean, it did. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> uh, there we go, send self, sensors push. That was a dumb mistake. There we go. So now we should see the radii. There we go. Look at that. So what we were looking at here as an example was the one at negative two seven. Oh no no seven. Eight eight comma seven. So where's the eight comma seven? It has a radius nine. Yeah yeah that's what we figured out. Okay good. All right we're on the right track. Um, so the distance to the line that we care about is equal to the sensor's location y value minus self part one row apps. Berlin, distance to line is dist. Let's do that. Let's see what that looks like. 864. Okay, so now we can see that some of them, this has radius 4, but it's got distance to line 10, so we don't care about that one. So we're going to say if um, dist is greater than the radius, continue. And now we'll only show the ones that are in range. And 87 should be in range. Yeah, so distance to the line is 3 with a radius of 9. All right, so now. All we need to do, we can pull out the hash set now. We know that our x coordinates are going to be from six less than our our x coordinate, all the way to six greater than our x coordinate, right? So we can say for x in six less than. So actually, we. Um, I guess we can do remainder is equal to, we know that dist is greater than radius. Uh, dist is less than or equal to radius. Radius minus the dist. So we're going to do the rx coordinate, which is x, s dot lock dot zero minus remainder. Let's actually split it out so we can see it. Let left x, or uh, yeah, left x is equal to s lock zero minus remainder. And then right x is x lock one plus remainder. And then we want to, for that range, left x dot dot equals right x. Right, because they could end up being the same number if remainder is zero. But if the remainder is zero, we still want to hit it here, right? Because this is nine away from S, and we still want to tag that line. So that's why I'm doing an inclusive range here. So this should go from nine to nine, for example. Uh, and then we'll just say coverage, push, oh, insert X. Um, and then Let's print out the resulting coverage, see what that looks like. 
This is just the coverage for line 10. Oh, yep, and there it is. Negative 1, 24, 5, 14, blah, 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 blah. So now we have to subtract out the beacon, right? Because there's the beacon here. How many are in here, by the way? Uh, that's Because that's all we care about is the coverage len. Now, before I hit save, I'm going to predict that it's going to be 27 because there's 26 positions where a beacon can't be present and there's one beacon on that line. So that should give us 27 total. And then we have to subtract out all the beacons. 27. Okay. So let coverage equals coverage len. And now we need to get rid of all the beacons. Let beacon... Let's find the beacons first. Is equal to self sensors iter filter sensor with a sensor dot lock dot one right. We care about what line we're on. Is equal to self part one row. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll map that to the its x coordinate right. Map that sensor to sensors lock zero. Collect back I64. So we can see which beacons. There should only be one beacon on that line. Print line beacons. And it's empty. Okay. We found no beacons on that line. Oh, we have to say, all right, we're looking for the beacon. <laughs> Duh. Not the sensor's location, the beacon's location. All right. Two, two, two. Oh, there's multiple beacons on line 10. I mean, there's one beacon on line 10, but three different sensors found it. Okay. We can fix that with a hash set from iter this. And now we should just get that one beacon. If I put a semicolon there, oh, I have to tell it that it's a hash set of I64s. OK, I can do that. There we go. So now there's one beacon on that line. So our answer for part one is going to be uh, coverage. We can get rid of this line. We don't need this line here. And this line, coverage.len minus beacons.len. And that failed because I put a semicolon on the line that I wasn't supposed to put a semicolon on. All right, so that should be 26 for the test input. Let's get rid of those print lines. Print lines, we don't need those anymore. All right. Um, and now I want to switch to the real input, which means I have to change this from 10 back to 2 million and change this. Oops. Like that. All right. Now we see if we, I massively underestimated the amount of computational power we require for this. Usually part one, even if the problem has a lot of work that it needs to do, part one is usually fast enough. Yeah, it still took nine seconds though. That's painfully slow. I bet you there's a better way to do that, which we're gonna have to come up with. Yeah, I'm not surprised that was the right answer. That's why I didn't really react to it, but huzzah, the right answer, yay. Okay, there, there's my reaction. Um, I don't know what part two is going to bring, but I think it's going to be the full thing like they, they hinted at. Um, and before I look, let's get these changes committed. Git status, git add source, git commit dash M 2022 day 15 part one. Quick news says, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Hold your applause for part two though. Jobs. <laughs> uh, um, so let's take a look at part two. 
Continue to part two. Your handheld device indicates that the distress signal is coming from a beacon nearby. The distress beacon is not detected by any sensor, but the distress beacon must have an X and Y coordinates, each no lower than zero and no larger than four million. Okay, so it restricts the search space, but it's still huge, right? It's four million by four million, which is more RAM than I have. So I can't like just store that. I have to come up with something really clever. Uh, to isolate the distress beacon signal, you need to determine its tuning frequency, which can be found by multiplying its X coordinate by four million and then adding its Y coordinate. In the example above, the search space is smaller. Instead, the X and Y coordinates each can be at most 20. With this reduced search area, there's only a single position that could have a beacon, 1411. Okay, so we can definitely do it with the test input. Um, part two, max. Let's just do that. Uh, self part two, max is equal to 20. Now let's put this back to 10. And then this is 4 million. Like that. Okay, and then we'll switch this back to the test input. All right, so part two. What are we going to do? Um, I think we can create at least a, an array of 4,000 and maybe, or 4 million rather, and then maybe in each array entry because i think what's going to happen here's my supposition is there going to there's going to be a single location that's not covered by the sensors um if if you know my experience with advent of code holds there's going to be a single answer he's not going to have multiple coordinates that are, are missing the overlap so the idea is that here's what i'm thinking is is we have an array i'll call it um Region, I don't know, think of a better name, region one, region two. And each one of them will have like a range struct. I'll create a range struct which has the low, high. And they'll actually have a vector of them. And so on, of, of all the things that are covered. And what we can do is we start out each region with a single range. So each region starts out with a range from zero to four million. Actually, it's gonna be the part two, part two max, or whatever I call it. I think I call it part two max. All right, it'll do that. And then as we go through this, we can use the same logic to determine the coverage for each sensor on that particular row. Should I call them rows instead of regions? Um, and then what we can do is we can carve out what's covered. And that way we're only storing like start end ranges. We're not storing every single bit that's covered. That's, that's what I want to try implementing. Um, so let's, let's do that by, let's keep that comment there just as a reference. I'll say let mut row, row data is a vec of vec of, oh, I don't have to create a range struct, right? We can just use, Rust has built-in ranges. So I can just say vec of zero dot dot self part two max all the way down to self part two max. That should compile, right? No, it doesn't like that. Expected use size, okay. I can change that to a use size. Okay, so we got three warnings because we're not using it, that's fine. Okay, so we're able to create the row data. It's able to compile something that large. Well, we don't know how big it is yet until we actually run it. Uh, I'll hit run here just to see. Um, and because we're using the test data, it should run pretty quickly. Yeah, 26. Okay. So now we're going to loop over all the sensors again. Um, I'm pausing just for a second because I went to a new line and it didn't indent it where I expected it to indent. So I'm wondering if there's a bug I introduced somewhere. 
Um, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay, let me let me do this for s in self sensors. No, what's going on here? I'm gonna restart uh, NeoVim. Well, let's save it. Some something's weird. Yeah, okay, now it's getting it right. Good. Um, so we, we need to basically do the same thing we did for part one, right? We get the radius, that radius is equal to S radius. We get the distance Um, oh, we have to do this for each row, right. Um, and the rows have to be capped, right? We, we can't go negative and we can't go greater than part two max. Oh, is it up to or does it include? No lower than zero, right? So zero is included and no larger than four million. So this has to be included, okay. Um, we need to loop over. So we need to say, uh, let's figure out what the top is. The top of the thing is going to be no lower than zero. So if we say zero dot max of um, lock one minus radius and let the bottom is equal to self dot part two max dot min of s lock one plus radius to power show thank you thank you for the follow much appreciated um in case people are wondering i am four followers away from 700 very exciting all right so this will go from zero to whatever and then the top versus the bottom the top will be the the no, no lower than zero, and the bottom will be no lower than our part two max, right? And so now we can loop over each row for row in top to bottom. And we have to include the bottom. Um, what do we do? Um, this is where we calculate the distance to this particular row. So that dist is equal to lock one minus the row abs. Right, just like we did up here. Um, but now we know it's going to be within the radius. We don't have to check the radius thing because we, we're the top to bottom won't work if we're not within the range of this particular row. So we don't have to check that. But we do want to calculate the left and the right on the uh, x. So we can say let min x is equal to zero dot max would do something similar here x dot lock dot zero minus the radius minus dist so here's the radius minus dist i calculate i put that in remainder here and i'm just doing it directly here and then let max x is equal to um self dot part two max dot min of s lock zero plus radius minus dist. All right, so these are our min and max x ranges. Now I want to extract the range that's in this particular row and split it up if we need to. Um, and how do we do that? So if, so basically it's, we have a, a start of the range and the end of the range. Um, we're going to create a new range vec that we're going to replace. So we, we're looking at this guy here. Um, and it's going to have a start and end. And I think you can do that, right? Let me take a look at Rust Lang region. I think that's all I need. Region interface. Oh, region inference. No, I don't care about that. I want to look at the regions in Rust. Was it a oh, range? Range, not region. Range. There we go. 
I don't know why I'm stuck with it. Uh, yeah, so there is an end and a start function. So we can get the end and the start for each um, each region. So let's say let's say our region has a start that goes here. Regalx, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. So there's a few different possibilities, right? If their start and end is like this, and we have like a min x max, then we want to split it into two different regions. We want to go from start to min inclusive. Oh no, exclusive, right? Because min should not be included. And then we go want to go um, max plus one to end. Another possibility is it goes like this, min, max, right? And in that case, we want to go start to min exclusive and end to max. No, we just want to chop this off, right? We don't care about the max side of it. We just chop this off. We go start to min exclusive. And then the final possibility is that, oops, we, min starts earlier and it ends up, you know, somewhere over here. In which case we want to just have this region included. And then as we go, as we run, the the, um, the rays should get smaller and smaller, and then finally there should only be one left. Um, so let's see if we can make this happen. So we can say for, well, we're going to create a new range array that we're going to replace our current range list with. So we can say for r in row data of row, right? And then this should be just a row. It's a range inclusive. And then so we can have a start r start and let end is equal to r end um, if start so if the min region is min max is over here so if a start is greater than max then we don't care and we'll just say new range push that range onto there and then continue um, at the end of the for loop, we're going to just replace the range. We're going to say row data row equals new range. Okay. I think I'm understanding myself so far. So now this, we have to do the same thing for the end, right? If end is less than, oh, this should be max x. If end is less than min x, then new range. Push. That means the range we're looking at is past um, the section we care about. Okay, so now we have a choice to make. Um, if the start is less than the min, then we're going to push a range that includes start but does not include min. So if start is less than min x, new range push start through min x minus 1. If, and then we have to look at this side here, if end is greater than max, then we're going to push a new range that starts at max plus one all the way through. Oh, this has to be inclusive, right, um, to the end. And that, that should show us our row data. And then as we go through the sensors, we should get fewer and fewer sections that are visible. Um, we can print this out. Ooh, that's going to be a lot of data. I don't want to print it out. Um, what I can do, though, yeah, at the end, I can print the whole thing out. Print in row data like that. And I'll see what it looks like. Does this even build? It doesn't. Of course it doesn't. Um, oh, okay. That's not too bad. Um, expected I64 found I64. Okay, so let's do this. And we have to do it here as well. Uh, as you size. Okay. 
Oh, okay. Um, I don't want to do that. So I don't want to move it. Let's do that. And that might change R. So now R is going to be a reference. Is that going to be a problem? Expected reference. Oh. I don't want to push references onto here. I want to push the actual thing. This is... Oh, it's because I'm doing this. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because of this. Got it. Got it. It was seeing these first, right? And seeing, oh, I'm pushing references on. So if I do a clone, that should allow me to push the actual thing on. And this needs to be mutable, of course. All right. What do we got? Computing. Panicked. Out of bounds. Length is 20, but the index is 20. Oh, right. Um, that's this over here, which is where? Up, 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 up there. X is 14 and Y is 11. Uh, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. How about that? Okay, so now all we have to do is find that. Um, let's not print out the row data, but we can lo loop over the rows and look for the first non-empty row. Right, then it's going to contain this region and we can just grab the first one. So let x chord equals um, r dot r of zero dot start. Um, let me just take a quick look at the type. It's an i64. That's fine. We'll make an uh, i64. And now we need the y coordinate, which means y. Uh, and row data iter enumerate. Right. And then we just need to, uh, what's the answer? The answer is Multiply x coordinate by 4 million. Lin, and we should be this big number here. Um, so it's x times 4 million plus y. And then break. Um, what? Oh, x coordinate. Let's just call it x. Right? Is that all we need to do? It, will this be that big number? It is. Okay, and that's actually what we should be printing out or returning as our data. So instead of this, we say return, create output. Um, there. Oh, right, we don't need to do this fancy stuff here. We can just output it directly. There it is. Okay. So should we try it with the real input? Um, let's do that, do that, do that. And let's see how long it takes to run. <clears throat> and what kind of number it comes up with. It's taking a while. Should I run it in um, in release mode instead? Wow, that's a big number. That is a big number. Okay, let's see what it says. That's the right answer. Oh, thank goodness, because I wouldn't know how to debug this otherwise. All right, let me try this in release mode. Cargo run release and see um, see if it's better than, oh, unreachable statement, right? Okay. And then I'll run Clippy also. Yeah, so it went from nine seconds to uh, uh, 
Wow, There's a, there must be a lot of error checking there. Oh no, that was the parsing. Yes, yeah, nine seconds to one and a half, and then from whatever it was to six and a half. So not too bad. Um, it's still extremely slow. Uh, I don't know what I could do to speed this up. Clippy's happy with it, so there you go. Um, is there anything I could do that would make this faster? And I think it's just that, you know, we have 4 million rows that we have to process. We are restricting what we have to process by the radius, but the radius is, the radii are probably very big. I don't know that there's an easy way to make this go fast. I wonder, hmm. If I did bit manipulation instead of range manipulation, but then I'd have to write a lot more code in order to handle the bits. Uh, Richard says those multiple for loops. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 basically, you know, it's kind of like an n squared, o of n squared kind of thing. Um, because you take the sensors, and then for every sensor, you have to go from its its range of top to bottom. Um, but there, yeah, like I said, there might be a faster way if we do, did bit manipulation instead of ranges, but then you'd need one bit for every sensor that's in the range of your, um, every tile that's in the range of your sensor. And then, so it's, even then it, it's, it'll be big. It'll be like 4 million times, um, times 4 million divided by 8. So you still need a lot of memory, right? You need, I, and which I don't have that much memory. So I think I think range is the only way it's going to fit, and then it, we just have a very slow solution. I'll, I'll check with the Reddit. I'm sure there's some very smart people on Reddit who figured out a bit faster, stronger way to do it. Let's take a look at the calendar. Ooh, look at that. There's a mountain. So we, we went through this, this waterfall thing here. I guess we were, we're working our way through the cave system and it looks like there might be a mountain that we're approaching or a pyramid or something in the jungle. A volcano. That's pretty exciting. Good Monk says, I think that if you first iterate over rows and then over sensors, it would be better. That way you don't need to store all the rows, just the current one. And as soon as you find an uncovered spot, you can return the answer. Yeah, that, that would be super smart, wouldn't it? I wish I were that smart. Um, so yeah, you go through each row, and then have the sent have see what sensors. Okay, let's let's commit these changes, and I can tr try that out. Git add uh, commit dash am twenty twenty two day fifteen part two. All right, and let's go over here. Um, I'm going to leave it on Clippy because I don't want to run it every time I save the file. Oh, check leaderboard. Yeah, good idea. Did I crack 10K? Ah, oh, so close. Oh, so close. 280 off by cracking 10K. Dang it. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow's my lucky day, I think. All right, let's try that. Let's um, see if... I can go from row to row. So each row, just we just care about one. So we could just say for row in zero dot dot um, equals self part two max. It's doing this again. Oh, maybe it's because I got I messed up this stuff here. Maybe that's what the problem is. There we go. Much better. Go through monk says a lot of people are stuck on part two. Yeah, um, it's it's a tricky one, right? Because you have to figure out how to efficiently do this work. And obviously my version is not very efficient. So now we have the row that we're working on. Now we could loop over each sensor. We'll still get the radius top and bottom. Right, and then we can compare, we can look to say if top 
is greater than a row that we're on or bottom is less than the row that we're on, then we can continue with the next sensor, right? If it's not in, if the sensor doesn't cover our row, then we should be good. And I, th I think I did that correctly. All right, so then we do this kind of thing still, right? Um, we do need to create a new row. Um, but it's just the range, right? Back bang zero dot dot equals self part two max. Um, so that's all we need to do there, and then we do this this same logic here, right? Not right, and then but at the end, if the row is not empty, we found our answer, right? If new range Oh wait 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 This is row data. We we don't care about that. We need we still need to loop over the row data. The row data needs to be created here. Right. but it's no longer an array. Yeah. So if we process all the sensors, and then we can take a look at, oh, and we could say uh, row data is equal to new range. There, that should work. I'm gonna switch this back to the test input for speed. Um, what was this? 20. I just want to see what we, what we come up with and I can just print out each row as we finish it. All right, I can just say print lin row, row data. And we can, we can watch it as it comes out. And I messed up a where? Oh, right here. Um, oh, it's not, <laughs> it's not a function. Okay. Let's see what we got. So as, as each Okay, so as soon as we find and we see a non-empty row, we can say we're done, right? And that was, well, that was fast only because we have very small, okay, input. Um, so row data is is that we can just say if not row data is empty, then we just use that same logic we had before, right? And that's all we need to do. And that way, as soon as we hit, let me put this line here. Oh, we don't have, we don't have Y. Y is the row that we're on. And I think it's already a I-64, yeah. Oh, um, Yeah, so it stops as soon as it hits 14 and comes up with the answer. Wow, all right. Um, let's try it with the real data. Like that. And let's see how long it takes now in. Oh, that's right, part one is still nine seconds though. We gotta speed up part one somehow. Nine seconds is a long time when you're streaming. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I, I, I'm printing all these out. Shoot, that's going to be uh, very noisy, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to quit this. Let me, um, let me not print those out. Okay, uh, cargo run. Yeah, I just wanted to run it in non, but yeah, so that's still nine seconds. And this is what the, um, oh, I forgot. Oh yeah, I remember what the answer was now, yeah. 56, a whole bunch of zeros, and then a 11. So it's down to 19 seconds, so it's faster in release mode one point four seconds and three seconds ah, I, it's it's a lot better so thank you card bunk for that for that idea let me uh, pull out uh, um, previous version of the code right this should find one that's not empty so that's good um, a bit better it's yeah it's about it, less than half the speed so I, I would call that a major win if I were doing like performance work which I did that's part of my day job is performance work uh, this kind of improvement on <laughs> perf is is awesome um i wonder if there are people who've gotten it like under a second and stuff like that there's probably some logic here that could be cleaned up maybe the ranges since we only have one yeah maybe because if there's only one we only have to deal with now i was going to say well you could do a hash set right but the hash set you have to en insert every single entry Right, and these ranges could get big, so we're going to have big loops. So this is probably faster than a hash set. Epic blog says programmer noun an individual who is able to identify the cause of a bug by staring at a pile of gibberish output. 